Welcome to Sisters Conversations Podcast with your hostess, Latrice Carter. We feature interviews in literary, film, and television, as well as real topics that impact the Black community. Welcome to today's show. Today's show is geared toward our physical health and getting fit and healthy. It's all about creating healthy habits. My guest today is Felicia Malone. Hey, Felicia. Hi, Latrice. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I am awesome. Thank you for having me. Oh, you are so welcome. Now, I like to hear real stories from women like yourself um, when it comes to creating healthy habits and getting fit. Um, I know you are an author. You are a published author, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But let's jump right in and talk about um, your fitness journey. You know, um, how how long have you been on your journey and um, what type of um, obstacles did you face um, when you first got started? Okay, I would say it's it's been a lifelong journey for me. I started to gain weight uh, as a young child, really, um, probably the third grade or so. Um, I skipped the fourth grade, so like third, fifth grade. And, um, and I, I really didn't understand why. So as a child, I just understood that eating too much made you fat. And I was teased and this, that, and the third. So my solution was not to eat. Mm. So I would skip lunch. Uh, and I would have like, <laughs> I remember I would, I would ask the teacher if I could uh, grade papers or do some type of assistance. So I'd skip lunch. I would have those little budding lunch meat because, you know, we weren't, we weren't rich now, so I couldn't have, bring my own lunch, but I, that's what I would eat just not to, like, have a headache. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I really started developing really poor, <laughs> um, like, a relationship with food and weight and all of that, mm-hmm. um, and then as kind of a teenager raised in the church, I started fasting, you know, mm-hmm. and so then I, I, it would increase the days without eating, Although I was, you know, thinking I was doing it for a spiritual purpose, it, the result was that I, I lost weight. And so that kind of was my method, was not eating. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, when you start to eat again, then the weight comes back even more. So that began um, like a decades learn, uh, long journey of gaining and losing like, really lot, vast amounts of weight. Mm-hmm. Um so uh, when I was in college, which I went to college in 1995, I started, you know how you gain your freshman 15 or whatever. Well, yeah. I was already fat, so I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and I use that term, you know, facetiously, jokingly, facetiously, right. so not as an insult. Um, but we also had access to a gym and fitness center, so... Mm-hmm. And I walked everywhere. So I really was, I think I got down to maybe a size, from a size 16 down to a size 11, 12. And, you know, back then, you know, you wanted to be a little thick. So Mm -hmm. I thought I was hitting back then. So So when the doctor's like, oh, you're overweight, I was like, oh, you're not talking about me because I'm thick in these jeans. (laughs) I know we got to have a little, just a little thickness with us. (laughs) So I'd say when I graduated and also when I was in college, I went through these phases of um, like different types of fast. Like I I went without eating salt and sugar, Mm -hmm. um, which was helpful because it it reset my palate. So even now to this day, I don't like sweet drinks. I don't, I drink Mm -hmm. unsweetened tea. Um, If I were to eat fast food, I would say, don't put salt on my fries, you know, things like that, that I carry with me today. But all of this was, was really me trying to fix an issue that I really didn't know I I had at the time. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to me moving to Dallas in circa 2007, and I think it was about, 
I had been here a few years. So it's probably like 2011, just a routine doctor's visit. And now I was working for the bank of that good insurance. So they actually did the right testing and I found out I was hypothyroid. Oh, wow. So I don't know how long I had been hyperthyroid, but he's like, well, I'll give you, you know, six months and, you know, test it again. But I never had it tested for another few years. So when I um, finally got tested, I told the doctor when I went in for my my exam, I said, well, I was told that I was hyperthyroid a couple years ago. And so he did the test. And I remember I was going to the gym that day and I was at the gym when I got the call from the doctor and he's like, I have to put you on medication today. Your thyroid is extremely dangerously low. Oh my goodness. And when I look back at those pictures, because I was in grad school at the time and I have my grad school ID, I literally look like Rasputia, like from wow. Norway, like, the, like bloated because that's one of the symptoms of hypothyroidism is like this, you have this puffy eyes and I have this puffy neck and I would try to hide behind all these layers of clothing and hair, et cetera. But I mean, there's only so much covering up you can do. And it was kind of devastating when I I was first diagnosed. I know now it, it doesn't seem like such a big deal, but having to be told you're going to have to take a pill for the rest of your life every day for the rest of your life. I didn't really know what that looked like. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was, it was kind of challenging. And I, and one of my friends, I I spoke to her and she's like, well, you can't address what you, you don't acknowledge or you're not aware of. So um, that is something like a message for especially black women that it is important. You take care of everybody else to take care of yourself um, to get your wellness exams and your dental work and your eye exams. And that that's something I'm doing this week. <laughs> okay, okay. I got dental work in my eye exam and I got to schedule my well Um So it, although it was challenging at the time, it helped. It, it was that missing piece of knowledge because I couldn't understand why I couldn't lose weight. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't matter if I eight uh, yes. you know what I thought was the bare minimum I would not gain weight but I couldn't lose it mm-hmm. because my metabolism was not working well I was always cold I like <laughs> I remember I was I was I was working at the bank in Chicago before I moved and I was always wear a shawl and drink tea and they would call me old lady because I was so cold all the time, Mm -hmm. you know, and I remember my hair was thinning and um, I was telling a friend about, she's like, oh, that's in your head. It's just in your head. I'm like, no, it's in my head, on my head. On my head, right, right. (laughs) So, and and it's, it's that piece of knowledge because I loved peanut butter. Well, with hypothyroidism, you shouldn't eat peanuts. Oh, you know, wow. Because a handful of peanuts inhibits the thyroid chemical from, you know, being, being utilized. Mm-hmm. Um, you shouldn't eat soy, you know, things of that nature. So just, I was doing things that it was, it's, it's almost like you're trying to run uphill up, up a sand hill, right? Mm-hmm. Because you, you don't really have a, a solid foundation of knowledge to, to go on. So once I got the diagnosis and I got over myself, I was like, okay, I think I can lose this weight. I can do this. And that's how Get Fit With Fee was birthed. It was a way for me to hold myself accountable Mm -hmm. and have accountability partners. Yes. And so it, it just started and it's a Facebook group and it began just with my family and friends and to join you have to be invited by one of those people so that way the group stays really um true to its core values just just being someplace people can be honest and feel comfortable posting their workouts posting Mm -hmm. their meals posting their challenges posting you know 
because I, I'll <laughs> I'll do a, a live video and I'm like, look, I messed up, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> game late because I've just been in my feelings, you know, and and, and it's okay, it's, yes. and it's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> because it truly, truly is a journey. And um, what I have also learned, because when I first, 2014, when I started this group, hit the ground running, it was like smoothies, salads, watching what they eat, work. I used to work out two, I used to work out two hours at a time. Oh, wow. I was a part of 24 hour fitness and I would take either a cardio dance class, a Zumba class, and then that body pump class. So I would (laughs) would take one class, eat a protein bar, drink some water, rest a little bit, and then take the next class. And I did that until, I mean, I I did that for like a good year or so. And I lost like 40, 40 something pounds. And I was just like, oh, I got this thing beat. Right, (laughs) right, right. (laughs) <laughs> and then life, you know, happens and I, I, I steadily gained the weight back and I, I gained, I gained about maybe 30 of those pounds back mm-hmm. and I had to reassess again. And I, at this point, I, you know, I couldn't do the two hours anymore because that's just hard on your body. It is. Um, so I had to really address the root cause and I was eating, you know, too much mm-hmm. and too much of the wrong food. I was pre-diabetic because so when I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, I was also di- got diagnosed as pre-diabetic. I lost all the weight, taken off medication. So I thought I was just winning in life. So it was such a letdown to have to get back on medication to have regained the majority of the weight um, and really be starting over from scratch. Mm-hmm. And now it felt like I was starting over without that um, ability to work out as hard as I did. Mm-hmm. So that forced me to look at my diet. <laughs> right. Which <laughs> is key. That, which is key. Yes. Which they say is what, 80% of losing weight. So if I'm not working out, two hours a day, then okay, then I need to account for those extra calories that I've been eating. Right. Um, and so that that really forced me to look within and honestly admit that I was an emotional eater. You know, I am. I, I would admit that I am an emotional eater. <laughs> you see this, I'm re trying to get, I'm like last year I had lost, I was a lot smaller. One of the drugs that I, that I was on for chemo, mm-hmm. they warned me, they, they signed me to a nutritionist and they mm-hmm. reduced my calorie intake because this particular drug caused you to gain weight. Mm-hmm. Now, the first set of drugs, I lost weight. I lost 30 pounds. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, not intentionally because mm-hmm. it, you know, it, 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 it kind of just takes a lot from you and you drop weight. So the second round, this particular this new drug and they and they warn you and they like, we're just going to warn you so we're going to put you on a strict diet i was on a 1600 um she reduced me down to 1400 calories per day well not per day per per meal reduced me down to 1400 calories per meal instead of your normal 2000 some calories and she was like okay drink increase your water because this particular drug will make you put on some pounds. And knock on wood, I, I mean, I only gained 10 pounds instead of the 30 pounds while I was on the on it. But I'm like, I was, I was like, I was already working out. And, you know, I was happy last year when I was getting down to a, I was coming down. I was in my targets every month mm-hmm. and only to have to, like you say, gain it back so I get through the I'm an emotional eater so when I got re-diagnosed with breast cancer I was like girl I had cookies Girl Scout cookies <laughs> you name it I had it I was just walking I was like having a pity party you yeah. know mm-hmm. and hey, look so now I'm like starting over like you say starting I'm starting all over again and that's okay I was like 
this is it. Went and bought all the right foods, the lemonade food, stop eating out. <laughs> well, we didn't have a choice um, to the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> but um, just changing, have to look back and change my eating habit. Because um, yeah, yeah. being an emotional eater is hard. It's, it's like a hard habit to break, you know? Yeah. What did you do to uh, to kind of break, kind of like, not I don't know if you broke it, but uh, at least reduce it? Well, I am a big fan of getting help, getting assistance um, from coaches, from counselors, et cetera. So, you know, life really happened um, all around like the same time I went through a, a really difficult breakup. Um, I was had, my mom had some health issues and my sister um, went through a double transplant. I moved to a whole new state, started a new challenging job in leadership. So it was very emotional and the job was very, is very stressful. So I would find myself working early, working late, not going to work out and then snacking to calm my nerves, mm-hmm. snacking because another deadline, you know, and then you, you kind of put that weight on. So, um, so I did start, I did, you know, start, see, I started seeing a therapist for a little bit um, just to get that out, you know, to be able to talk to someone who doesn't know you, Right, you know, right. and you can just kind of share um, those struggles. So just getting it out helped. Um, and also it's something that I constantly deal with. So uh, for me, identifying what my triggers are. Mm-hmm. So I can I can feel myself getting emotional and I can ask myself, okay, before you grab that snack or food, what are you feeling? Are you thirsty? Are you really hungry or are you sad? You know, mm-hmm. and then that third is the hard thing. Like, okay, I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling, you know, um, unappreciated. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling overworked. Okay, so once you've identified what you're really feeling, okay, then how do you address that issue? And like, if I'm overworked, I know I can rest, right? If I am thirsty, I can drink water. If I'm really hungry, I know I can cook a meal. Um, But if you're lonely and you're in a pandemic and you're away from your family and you broke up with, you know, the person that you got to marry. So that was kind of the tricky one right there. Um, But what I have learned is that you allow yourself to feel those emotions Mm -hmm. and without judgment and it passes just like any type of craving. It's not fun. It's not something that I like to do, but the more you try to avoid it, then something else will pop up. Mm -hmm. So that helps with me. Okay. It's okay to acknowledge that this is how I'm feeling and let it pass. So whatever that takes, if it takes journaling, if it takes crying, if it takes you know, saying, okay, I acknowledge this is how I'm feeling and without judgment. And like I said, in a, it'll pass. And I tell myself that sometimes I, I breathe, the breathing techniques. It's like, okay, I feel a little lonely, like I'm missing someone, but this is going to pass. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I deal with it. Okay. That's good. That's a good, um, that's really good. And talking to someone really does help. Um, Cause I did the therapy and I'm still um, doing therapy um, just because they got to get all those emotions out. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't get it out, it's going to come out in a different form somehow, yeah. some way, for sure. Um, absolutely. Um, so what is um, what is your favorite exercise routine that you like doing that kind of gets you going? Well, I love being outdoors, which is why I had to move back to Texas where there was some sunshine. (laughs) I like, I will, I live maybe like 0.25 miles from a park and I walked from home. I walked to the park. It has, you know, inclines and hills and valleys and all that in a lake. And and that's what I'll do is I'll walk and then I'll kind of run up the incline sometimes and, and I'll, I'll tie myself 
Um, for times like today, when it's rainy and cold, I invested in a match trainer, uh, which is, a, I think it's a both flex brand. Um, and it's kind of like a, like a upright elliptical. So like the gears move like a elliptical, but they're upright. And so the mm-hmm. gears kind of go up and down like a stair master. Yeah. Um, I like that because it's not a lot of um, stress on your joints because, uh, you know, your knees will take a beating, especially when you gain weight. Um, and I've been getting into yoga. I'm not like a downward facing dog, warrior pose type, type of work. <laughs> yoga, I'm more of a yoga stretch girl. Mm-hmm. Like I like to do yoga to relax. I don't like to do yoga to yeah, you know, be in some strenuous poses. I'm like, nah, that's <laughs> I ain't about that life. But <laughs> okay. so those are the three, my three go-tos. And when I really don't want to work out, I just turn on some music and I dance. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's exercise. That is exercise. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. That was what I was doing last year, and um, I invested in an exercise bike. Um, and I had okay. my friend come over and we put that bad baby together. And because <laughs> it's cold here, you know, I'm 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 in Illinois. Mm-hmm. It's cold, yeah. <laughs> and the I'm weather. Chicago, has, I know. Yes, you know, you know. And the weather's <laughs> been flip flopping. Like last week, we had 75 degree weather for like three days. <laughs> Girl, it, we have not seen 75. <laughs> it's been in the 50s and the 40s. And I will usually walk from my house. To, there's a um, park district and it has a couple trails and I you know I'm walking I would get my 10,000 steps in and that's what I, I will walk Monday through Friday I like getting up working out in the mornings and then sometimes my friends were like let's own it um, let's go forward walk it's so nice or go ride the bike it's so nice in the evening time so sometimes twice a week I'll get I'll get it in twice a week and so and it felt good it does something to you mentally Mm-hmm. to exercise you think clear you uh, for me I know it I think clear I feel better and I work a very stressful job being a uh, manager so and I manage a team and you know it's like sometimes I have children <laughs> instead of employees mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, if you choir. can't say a word you just ra- wave your hand you just wave your hand if you can't say a word <laughs> you know so and it'd be those days I'd be like I- I've gone for a walk we had a one nice day probably two nice days this week where it was like uh, um almost 60 I was you know I gotta get out because I'm, I'm if I was in the office I would choke somebody so right. I would go for a walk and come back It'd be just a 30 minute walk because I'm on my lunch, right? So I'm like, yeah, okay, but that 30 minutes, that 30 minutes does a lot. It does. It really does. It's the um, it's the fresh air and then it's the sun, the vitamin D. Like it's a mood booster, you know, yes. and exercise itself is a mood booster. And when you are an emotional eater, um, and you have those kind of intense emotions. Like, like you said, I need to exercise. Mm-hmm. I don't feel my best if I don't exercise. Absolutely. So um, it is therapeutic for me uh, mm-hmm. and and I enjoy it. So, and I want to be active throughout my old age. So yes. I need to build those routines and build that stamina now. Um, so I like, I'm so inspired by all of these 75, 80 year old. Yes. Oh my and, goodness. I'm like, uh, I want to be like you models. And I'm like, come on now. You cannot have abs that look better than mine. And you twice my age. So I got to get it together. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. That those are our reality checks. Cause yes. I saw, I, I saw this picture of this lady. She's 80 some years old. And I'm like, Ernestine uh-uh. Stafford. Is it Ernestine Shepherd or is it the um their chef Babette? I don't know which one it is, but I was like, shame on me. <laughs> shame on me. I was like, wait a minute. Come on. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. I, those are the reality checks that I need. And it, it yes. motivates me to mm-hmm. get outside. You know, yes. especially as I look 
you know, I look back on my, in my family, you look at, you're looking at, I'm looking at the women that are, I'm like, Ooh, I said, I said, you know, my, um, my, my niece calls it, I'm just big bonded. No, baby, that is a fat gene. <laughs> <laughs> she, she'll tell you, I'm not fat. I'm just big bonded. I was like, no, baby, you need to get outside. Come on, walk with TT. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's really, you can kind of see a cultural shift. And um, especially if you're on Instagram uh, or even Facebook, there are a lot of Black vegans and mm-hmm. Black vegetarians and so many fitness groups. Like, and, and I do that too. I have Get Fit With Feed, but I'm also about part of like Black women losing weight and just mm-hmm. seeing those stories and everyone's story is different. You know, yes. some people have surgery, some people have... PCOS or other types of um, challenges to losing weight and they still do it. So um, it it just helps me to know that, A, this is a journey and not to be so hard on myself because I am still making progress even when it's slow progress. And as long as you have breath in your body, the Lord gives you, you know, your right mind, you can keep moving towards your goals. So I... When I, I can honestly think back when I first started back in 2011, I remember trying to jog down the block and I couldn't make it like one fourth of the way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And looking back on that. And since then, um, I I lived in Indiana for a short period of time, about uh, three or four years. And I joined Black Girls Run there. Mm -hmm. So that's another group. And I met a lot of great women and we did so many 5Ks together. Like that was our thing. So we would, you know, meet to, to, to walk, run, jog. I mean, I wasn't a runner, but I was a, a, a mean walk jogger. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Walk, the, the walk jog. And last year, I, you know, I trained my body last year and I'm like retraining my body. I, I walked for the first 30 days. And then mm-hmm. on the 31st day, I added a job, that walk job. Mm-hmm. And then by May, by June, I was, I, I could actually, literally, I was jogging. Cause I literally trained my body. And yeah, I, I'm just, you, it, it's cause you, you can't just like take off on, on something that you've, your body's never done before. Yeah. You have to train your body, um, and it is true. It takes it takes you thirty days to learn a new habit. <laughs> yeah, but that that just shows you how resilient the body is. I was um, list, I've been listening to these Les Brown uh, YouTube videos, some new <laughs> and some old, and he's basically talking about this 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 branch of study and I'm going to mess this up but it was like psychoimmunology I think that's what it's called and it's basically how you can um the the connection between your mind your mental state and your immune system um and 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 then I then I started looking that up and going down this rabbit hole but (laughs) basically you know, you can, like you said, you can train your body and you can also encourage yourself and talk to yourself and say, God designed me. It says in Psalms that we were formed in our mother's womb before we had any knowledge of who we were, you know, God made us. So God made me perfect. He made my body to heal itself. He made, um, so you just have to get back in touch with that. Yes, and when you meditate on that and meditate on the word that you that brings life, that's what I believe. The word of God is life. Yes, um, then it gives you that that ability to be rejuvenated. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I have to talk to myself and say, you know, that God made me um, perfect. And if something in my body is imperfect, then it has to get in alignment with yes, yes. the word of God. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, and, and bottom line, speak life. You have to mm-hmm. speak life over yourself. Pretty much. Yeah. And when you do that, then it's convicting because then you have to get in alignment. That's right. So if I'm saying God made me perfect and diabetes is not 
my design, then I need to put that ice cream down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yep. Yep. Got to put our weaknesses down. Yes. yes. Because that is contrary to the word. Mm-hmm. Right. And the word is, infa- if the word is infallible and it's truth, then I'm not going to negate it by my behavior. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. But like, in that respect, some practical things that you can do is like I, I bought a, a Vitamix, which was an investment because those things are expensive. But making smoothies, right? And putting things that taste good together, um, although you can be a little heavy on the carbs in the smoothie, it's still better than eating yep. a pint of ice cream with a bunch of sugar in it. Mm-hmm. Every day, all day. Um, learning how to cook because that was always a challenge for me. I'm single and I always felt like if I did cook, I made too much food. I was wasting food. I'm like, girl, they got containers where you can freeze it. You know, Mm -hmm. like you're making this too difficult. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. And I started a garden, you know, it just little practical ways because with this whole pandemic, you know, I had like this anxiety about going and how, how freaking go to the grocery store, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know what? Not going to let it deter me. I got to, you know, you, look, people have been growing food for thousands of years. Yep. My mom had a garden in Chicago. My mama had, my mama had one in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> so in the city. So I ain't got no excuse. Okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> right. And it's healthier for you because yeah. you don't have to worry about the pesticides and all the mm-hmm. other stuff. Yeah. And let me tell you this. This is how God works, right? So I bought a house six months ago and it's a tree in the middle of my yard. And I was like, why did they plant this ugly tree in the middle of the yard? It is not, it looks like a big branch. It doesn't look like, like a big bush that it's a little skinny trunk. It's not even like a real tree you can hang a swing from. And I was just like, I should cut this down. But lo and behold, Right around March, there are these little flowers on the tree. I was like, oh, that's so cute. Well, these flowers became pink, and I thought I had a cherry blossom tree. So I had the electrician come out to fix some things, and he's like, oh, I see you got a peach tree. I was like, a peach tree? I think that's a cherry blossom tree. He's like, no, my mama had one of those, and they used to have big peaches. Honey, all of the branches hang all the way almost to the ground. So, um... I look out there yesterday and there are these little fruit bulbs on the tree and I take a picture and put in this garden group on product and they're like, girl, you got you a peach tree. I was like, oh. look at you, was going to cut it down. Yes. So now I got a vegetable garden and then I got a peach tree. Peach tree. Like, okay, Jesus. I don't need, I don't need no ice cream. <laughs> Go out there and get you some peaches, girl. Yes. <laughs> Oh, that is nice. That is very nice. You got to take a picture and post it on, on Facebook. Um, and yes, uh, when the peaches get like, you know, nice and mm-hmm. oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Mm-hmm. That's a blessing. Yeah. So I was, I, I kind of just reinforced that, okay, I can do this garden thing because it was, it just felt so intimidating at first, but that's how everything is when you first look at it. Um, and I just planted the stuff that I like. I planted some peppers because I like peppers. I planted tomatoes because I like tomatoes. I planted cucumbers because cucumbers, I can cut those up and it, that kind of, and you put a little vinegar, a little bit of salt, it, it's a substitute for chips because that's my Achilles. Yes. I'm a salty snack person. I'm not a big sweets person. Mm-hmm. Um, every now and then I get a craving for sweets, but the smoothie, I like smoothies. So mm-hmm. it. But the chips, that's just one of them hard things because they yes. got the right combination of crunch and salt. Mm-hmm. And you can just watch a movie and not think yep. about it. Yep. But when, you, when I started tracking, like I did this challenge where I was going to track all my meals for 30 days. And when I tracked it, I'm like, these chips are kicking my butt. You, you ate a bag of chips, like a full bag. It's like 800 calories. Mm-hmm. You yep. could have had a whole burger and a fries for that. And you, so I'm like, uh-uh. And then all the salt, especially with hypothyroidism, makes me bloated. And I was like, mm, see, yeah. 
This is like that bad relationship. You're not giving what you take it. That's what you that's, <laughs> that's oh, that's nice. I like that. Yes, the cucumbers. I've I've discovered I fall in madly in love. I chop up my cucumbers and mm-hmm. um I chop up some tomatoes. I make me a tomato cucumber salad or mm-hmm. just chop up some cucumbers and there's this Mexican season and I'll just sprinkle mm-hmm. a little bit of that on it. Girl, mm. yes, and yes. then I found this Southwest, um, uh, Southwest organic. Dip. I've been dipping that with the cut up some, some red, the red, red bell pepper and the yellow and the orange, and I just sit there and dip. I'm like, oh, this is so good. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I have like a go-to snack now instead of mm-hmm. going to us. Potato chips is my weakness. Um, yeah. The Girl Scout cookies are my weakness the mint things, the thin mints um, <laughs> and um chocolate I crave chocolate really bad so I told myself okay you can have a little piece of chocolate once a week you you should um I can send you this it's this like I don't know if you like protein shakes but it's like this chocolate protein shake or I bought the cacao in the the raw cocoa powder and you just make like a smoothie. So I would use the vanilla protein powder and then add like a tablespoon or whatever. And I'm not a big chocolate fan, but Mm -hmm. I would, you know, just do a little bit to give it some flavor and have like a, that's like a a, a chocolate shake or something. Okay. Okay. So um that's just one tip but I was I was never a big chocolate fan so I don't know if that'll work for you or not but (laughs) (laughs) I I just like this the smoothies are just like that I wish I had gotten that idea to make like that kind of high speed blender because it's a game changer it is because I I do a smoothie for breakfast and Mm I um I I bought all the stuff that make energy the green the the green smoothie the energy smoothie i bought all the different powders organic mm-hmm. powders to add to it um and when i tell you i have a smoothie i don't, I don't get hungry because i'm full and i bought the flaxseed the, mm-hmm. the flaxseed the poppy seed and she, my friend she was right she's like I put a whole lot because you know the poppy seed um when you put you know you just need like a half a teaspoon in, in your smoothie if you're making an eight ounce smoothie just do a half teaspoon because when you the poppy seeds they when you digest it it expands in your stomach and it makes you fuller quicker oh okay i, I did not that. know that yeah I've, I've never done the poppy seeds i've done flax seeds and um see i do both i mix them both okay. and okay. i'm full I, I mean literally if i eat if i drink one at 8 30 normally mm-hmm. i'll snack about 10 I look up, it's 1130. And I'm like, oh, I can go make my lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. that's yeah. It's, you know, I've, I've never done the poppy seed before. Yeah. Poppy seed. Um, I, I, I end up buying two in their big giant container. And my friend was like, you don't need two. So you're good for <laughs> the next two years. You don't mm-hmm. need that much, you know, because yeah. it's, it's a lot, but I'm, you know, especially being a breast cancer survivor, I, you know, I'm, really diving into all the organic yeah. and natural because that's what they push um they even push being a vegan I even tried to become a vegan at, at the, in this journey um I mm. took meat out I was like okay we're just gonna eat all vegetables I have to be honest that was like so hard yeah. trying to you know once you know when you a meat eater so now I'm like okay I'll do fish salmon tuna so not necessarily vegan but i'm just watching what i eat yeah i understand and and it's and it, it, you have to do what works for you mm-hmm. because you know some people say i went vegan and you know the sky is opened up and i saw you know <laughs> a new day <laughs> and other people you know they do keto I, I can't do the keto i just i need my fruit and i need my vegetables you know so um I think you just have to find what works for you. I know as being hypothyroid, um, I've just read a bunch of research and um, carbohydrates just don't process well and within, you know, my body. So if I eat a lot of um, carbs, like refined carbs, um, 
then I, I, I feel bloated. I have a lot of water retention. It just is just not good for me. So, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's just finding that balance and knowing that if you have like a, a moment of weakness, that's okay. Forgive yourself and move on. Don't ruin the whole day because you had a donut or something, Right. which, you know, I just don't buy donuts. That's just not my thing, but I might buy me some Cheetos every now and then. So that's, <laughs> yes, yes. But every time I track, when I do that, I have to make myself track my calories because then it's like, it's not worth it. It's so not worth it when you think about it just, it's so calorie dense, you know, and it's so much salt. It's Mm -hmm. just like, nah, it's not even worth it. I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, (laughs) I'd rather order like a, from the barbecue place and get like some fried okra (laughs) and I convinced myself that's healthier because it has okra in it (laughs) like it's healthier I can get okra that's good it's good it's good (laughs) so which is why I'm also growing okra because that is one of my things I like I do enjoy me some fried okra and it's better fresh because it's just it just doesn't taste the same if you buy it frozen and then try it. <laughs> and I got an air fryer. So, you know, I invest in the tools to reduce um, yes. the calories, yes. but, in, but, but keep the taste. Cause you have, it has to taste good. Yeah. It has to taste good. Yep. Or you're not, for me, I know if I, if I go on a meal plan or something and it doesn't taste good, I just won't eat. And then that's not good either. Yep. So you skipping, you a, to, yeah, skipping meals, make your, Skipping the meals, you actually you you actually make your body gain weight by skipping meal because now your body thinks you're starving, so mm-hmm. it goes into a shock mode and it starts storing fat. Yes, and I'm like, uh, uh-uh, uh, don't do that, don't do that, body, don't store no fat, don't do that. <laughs> you're like, no, nah, like please don't, don't do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So we have so we've been in COVID now for a year. Um, what has what has this taught you and what did you learn about you and what have you learned about yourself? Um, I would say for me, COVID felt like a, um, like a, almost like deja vu because when I moved from Texas to Indiana for those few years, that was right at the cusp of Ebola here in Dallas. And, you know, that's when, you know, nobody knew anything, how it was spread. You know, the guy came from Africa and then the nurse was infected. Um, I think it was like two other people got infected from him. And there was like this big daily news thing. And, you know, it was very frightening and anxiety inducing. So when this happened, it was almost like, okay, well, You've been through that. Don't panic. You know, trust God and, you know, just do what you know to do. Like, I I literally, I kid you not, I had masks left over because I'm like, my mom, I'm throwing nothing away from when Ebola happened. Mm. You know, you're like, wear masks and gloves when you go to the grocery store. At least I did. It wasn't like a mandate or anything. So when all of that, ended I still had like <laughs> some masks left that I just had placed in a box somewhere so although I moved to Indiana and back I still had those masks and so when this happened you know that's what I would do so I'm I'm someone who you arm yourself with faith and you arm yourself with knowledge right mm-hmm. and you don't act out of fear because fear is stifling it doesn't allow you to to move forward. And I really just had to rely on my faith. Like God brought you through all of this. He is not going to leave you because of this situation. And, you know, you never know really why you go through things or why um, until something like this happens and you see how your life has positioned you Mm -hmm. to um, kind of, be on the good side of it, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's 
to not, that's not to say anyone who has suffered through this isn't, you know, godly or God isn't on their side. They just have a different journey. Yes. Um, so I would say what it has taught me is it's actually increased my prayer life. Um, like a, our prayer group started praying more frequently. Um, it was just like this really spiritual awakening, this really getting into into God's word and being led by the spirit and not by the media. Um, and, and anyone who's a believer or if you're not a believer, I encourage you to become a believer, but <laughs> okay, it's, it's it, it's grounding. So it's really just reinforced that knowing God has made the difference in my, the, the my life's outcomes. Mm-hmm. You know, I grew up on the West side of Chicago, um, you know, back through the eighties and the nineties, back through the crack wars and all of that. Um, and for my life, I mean, my single, my mom was single mom for our lives to turn out the way that they had, I, I could just say it's only God's hand, Mm -hmm. you know, now they say, um, well, for the grace of God, go I. So I can never judge someone. I can never look down my nose at someone. It's really like this unmerited favor. Cause I, that's all I can say. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) So you are a published author yes. and Ruth, it's Ruth, you, you wrote about, I see your book cover, Ruth. Um, Ruth's Awakening. Ruth's Awakening. Story. And look, I'm trying to like get it out, get the word out, Ruth's Awakening. <laughs> um, along this journey, you know, tell, uh, tell our listeners a little bit about Ruth's, um, Ruth's Awakening. And will you be writing about, you know, your, your, your gift fit with fee journey? I mean, I know you blog, but you know, what's, what's next for you? And you know, that's two part question. (laughs) Well, I, writing Roots Awakening was like a seven year long journey and I'm right at another seven years. (laughs) So it's time. I guess that's, that's the number of completion. And that's, you know, how long it takes me to birth the story because I really, I have to. I take pride and in, in what I do and it has to be really good. And it has to be a story that has a good arc, de- develop character development and something that helps the reader, you know, mm-hmm. and entertains. So I am really been working on that. Um, I, I don't know if I've I'll ever, I'm, I don't know if I'll write um, about Get Fit With Fee. Perhaps I I think I'm strongest as a fiction writer and it, it, it would be a challenge. I, I guess that would be the next challenge which to be a write a nonfiction um, uh, personal journey mm-hmm. um, with Get Fit With Fee. So that's that's where I am right now. I am finishing up the sequel to Ruth's Awakening. Um, and I'm excited about it. It's, it's really coming together and it's, it's been, it's been another seven years. It's hard to believe that, but, you know, once I published Ruth's Awakening in 2014, there's this whole focus on marketing and selling and going to events and things of that nature so I it really technically hasn't been seven years of me actually writing it right. um, it's been more like three mm-hmm. um being focused but you know life happens and mm-hmm. it, it it can take you <laughs> on a few detours and that has happened as well so it's like everything that I've been through has added to my depth as a writer and I feel like I can have more textured characters uh, with a lot of different layers because of my life live life experience mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely absolutely well I'm looking forward to um to I'm, I'm going to order book one I, I told myself one of my um promises and goals that I made for myself for 2021 I'm reading more because yes. I know that's key authors who write read so yes. I've ordered 
my God, I've ordered so many books and I'm just, I don't know. It's just something just has come alive in me. So I've been going back, ordering previous um, authors who I've interviewed on the podcast. You've been on the podcast before. And I was like, okay, I got to get your book too. It's in my cart. So I have, have you and six other authors. It's gotten so bad, Felicia, that I have had to buy two new bookshelves. <laughs> so I'm building, uh, I'm pretty much building my own library. I have, you know, a, a nice library of indie authors, indie authors, national authors, you know, I have a combination. So um, I'm looking forward to reading um, Ruth's Awakening. So before the next one comes out, I'll be current. <laughs> Well, I will, I will say this. It is a quick read. It is like a good Saturday morning, sit with your feet up and your favorite beverage and get okay. you, you know, okay. your read on. So that I will say that. Um, <laughs> it, when I, I, I go back and I reread my book sometimes because just to stay fresh on the characters uh, so that you know, I'm not writing anything contradictory to what the character, yes. who the characters are. Um, but I can say like back then I was so naive and so innocent. And I was like, oh, this one's going to be so much, so much gooder. <laughs> you get better and better because as, um, as, as each book, and, and I've learned that with the, um, I have a new series that's coming out. Um, called um, Lucy Mason series and mm-hmm. I just sat back reading um, Lucy's Worth um, it's I was like oh my god my writing this is like it's next level from yeah. mm-hmm. the first book you know um, so I'm excited I'm super excited and I you know I've had several people read it and, and it's gone through the editors and the proofreading and a couple beta readers <laughs> so it's like okay that's what you think they were like oh my god where did you come up with this that's awesome yeah I have your book Deceitful Secrets and I've started reading it and I was like oh I'm too at the clutch of my pearls at those first pages. I was like, oh, oh my yes yes and you know what <laughs> you know what book two for Deceitful Secrets um it's gonna it's titled Truth and Lies I'm pushing to get that to come out um this fall so I'm actually going to be promoting that while I'm promoting this Lucy Mason series okay. um, because I'm like, okay, there's some growth here. And, and, you know, like you said, I have to go back and like read Seafood Secrets so I can kind of stay on point with um, the characters that's in there. Okay. Because I introduced a new character in Truth and Lies. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's going to be something. <laughs> All right, all right, bring it, girl. I was like, oh Lord. <laughs> you can be over there like, oh my goodness, Jesus. And you know what? I, I think I should probably put that in the book club. Um, the see for secrets. <laughs> I'm like, I'm I'm too single for this. I am too single for this right now. <laughs> Yes, yes. The see for you know, I have I you know what's so funny, you know, when you get these stories, they they just come to me. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, there's a lot of stories in me that's coming. I'm pretty sure, you know, Deceitful Secrets came out in 2017. Here okay. we are in 2021. Um, I had a couple of readers inbox me. Where's book two? And I said, you know, <laughs> I said if you read my bio up there, it says I'm a breast cancer survivor. So you know, things happen. You know, you don't yeah. feel like writing. And two, that story just wasn't coming to life. And it's, um, for some reason, I feel like God wanted me to get Lucy Mason series yeah. out first. Mm-hmm. Um, because when I tell you, I could not go back to that book. I wrote like probably the first two chapters of Deceitful 2. But mm-hmm. I could not get back into it. You know how you get into the groove yeah. and you mm-hmm. write. I could yeah. not get that out until I got these three series out. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I'm like, okay, he must want me to get this out first. That's, that's entertainment. This has a positive, important message. Yes. It's inspiring. It's going to be impactful. It's going to be encouraging. And this is, you know, going on in the world right now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, women value your worth, your worth, 
your faith, your heart, three treasures. <laughs> well, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to read it. I'm super excited. And I'm super excited to read Ruth's Awakening. Um, yes, I will be um, adding. It's in my cart with six other authors. So we're going to get that read. I'm, you know what? I think you're in Sister's Place Book Club. You should drop that link in the, in the, in the group so they can have another book. This is a, you know, we're, we're growing. It's 158 people in there right now. So okay. um, drop that link in the group so they can, you know, because we have a bunch, we have a several fast readers. I, I dropped the link in their book. The last book we just read, we discussed was um, Barbara Joe's Loving My Daddy to Death. That short story was good. It was good. And the one day she, she read it in, she said she read it in two hours. Well, she listened to it in two hours. To get the okay. audio version. I was like, really? Hmm. What do you think about the audio? Um, you know, when I have to travel, sometimes that, you know, I've had to travel for work and I had, I remember I had to drive down by Austin and it's like a four and a half hour drive. And so I got audible just for that drive. So when you have a commute, I can see the value in it. Otherwise, I'm more traditional and tactile. I like to have pages. I like to be able to flip back and, you mm. know, um, that's how I engage with the book. Um, like I have a Kindle and all of that. And my book's available on Kindle. And Kindle, all, some Kindle, even if it's not an audio book, it'll read the book for you. Oh, um, okay. I just... That's not my favorite. Yeah. Because um, like I was listening to like a nonfiction motivational book. And then it's like if they have charts or graphics, then you really can't see it, you know, because it but maybe a fiction book would work better on Audible. Mm-hmm. I for commute, because I really hate commuting, <laughs> it's something to keep my mind occupied. So I see the value in it there, but if for leisure, I prefer a, a physical book. Me too. I like to hold the book in my hand and be able to mm-hmm. flip the pages and like yeah. really, you can really get into a book. You get comfortable and you yes. just, yes, I love that feeling. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Okay. So is there a last question? So is there any advice that you would give um, women, especially black women, as they're trying to get get their mind right, healthy, get their mind right, um, emotionally, physically, um, when it comes on to be onto a fitness journey? I would say that you're worth it. And I'll share something one of my friends posted in a group of men is that she, that you should love and honor yourself. You know, um, I know a lot of women like myself, single, you want to get married and one of the vows is to love, honor, and cherish. Well, you should do that for yourself. Um, And it's not selfish and it's not negative to love yourself first, to put yourself first, to um, attend to your needs, right? So when you, even with like, with me and eating snacks, I'm like, I'm not junk. I don't need to eat junk food. Like that doesn't have any nutritional value. It doesn't add anything to my, my, the health that I'm seeking. And when you start to affirm your worthiness, affirm your um, beauty, affirm your right to exist and to exist without pain, to exist without disease, to exist in, in, in fully within abundantly, then um, that creates that inward shift creates an outward shift. Mm-hmm. So your inner um, declarations, your inner affirmations lead to outward outcomes. So that, that's what I would say. Okay, that's very good. I like that. I absolutely like that. Thank you so much for coming on the Sisters Conversations podcast. It was a pleasure to have you. And Thank you for having me as always. It's just good to see you. Yes, yes. Oh my God we won't let it be um, this long next time <laughs> absolutely yes. absolutely well, you have a beautiful evening enjoy your um enjoy your scenery a beautiful peach tree i'm jealous <laughs> yeah you're gonna have to come on down you're gonna have to come on down one of these days 
Well, you know what? Like I didn't want to move. <laughs> um, no, I'm not. <laughs> look, I don't know if I want to move. Uh, but maybe, you know, I figure I'm hoping and praying that 2022, we will be back, we'll be able to travel. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. And not be on this um, um, journey of, okay, uh, traveling, not traveling much. You know, last year I hit 50 and I was, was at home, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. wanted to go to Italy. Italy's closed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I still, you know, hopefully in another year or so, we'll, be, we'll get back to traveling. And I'll make my way down to, it's on my list, on my way down to visit Dallas. Never been. Would love to. <laughs> right, well, let me know. Sense. Yeah. Me, when you want, when you, uh, when you hit the town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And all right. Well, you have a wonderful evening and I will chat with you again. Okay. Thanks. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks to our special guests for joining the show today. Be sure to follow us on your favorite streaming channel so you don't miss a show. We can be heard on Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and YouTube at Sista's Place. Visit our website, www.sistasplace.com, to learn more about us.